What's up guys? With the leak testing and major repairs completed on the boat, it's time to move on to the next stage of the restoration. I was so impressed with how coat it worked in the last build, I've decided that I'm actually gonna use that as the bottom coating on the new John boat. So if you guys don't know what coat it is, it's a two-part epoxy. It's used for boat bottoms, decks, things like that. The cool feature, I guess, that sets this apart is that it actually has Kevlar built into it. So it's supposed to be really good at uh, abrasion resistance. So if you're beaching your boat and things like that, this should really give it a good protection. So I was able to rebuck all the rivets on the boat when I took this out on the water. Water, we weren't getting any leaks, but putting a layer of epoxy on the bottom of the boat will for sure make sure that we are getting no water in the boat from the rivets. First thing I need to do is see how I can get the boat off the trailer. With the trailer hooked up to the truck, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect everything from the boat. So the hard part of getting the boat off the trailer is complete. Now for the even harder part of flipping it over. <laughs> nice and slow. Okay, not too bad. Come over here. Oh. All right, well, I guess that's one way to flip your boat over. So first thing I wanna do is just give this a good wash down. This is just dirty, it's got I'm not really sure what's on it, but it's got something on it. So once I get this cleaned up, I'll take a look at this paint, see how good it is. If the paint's in good condition, we're going to be off to a really good start because then I just need to scuff everything up and I can epoxy right onto the factory paint. All right, now I'm not trying to just sand off all the paint. I'm just trying to get off any paint that doesn't look like it's adhered very well. I'm not sure what those rough patches were. They do seem to be a part of the paint though. Like maybe a small amount of corrosion from sitting on wet bunks or just the paint failing where it sat on the wet bunks. The sander's been working pretty well. I was able to go through and get all those rough spots off. Still not really sure what they are, but they're not on there anymore. I'm gonna come back with the power sander just to rough up the surface and give the epoxy something good to hold on to. The bottom has been completely sanded down. I think we're gonna have to give this one more wipe down with all the contaminants that we pulled up with the sanding. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the degreaser first, and then I'm gonna come behind with the hose and hopefully get this thing completely ready for bottom coating. All right guys, well, it's been a long day getting this ready to go, but we are almost there. So this has been washed, sanded, degreased, washed again, and now we're gonna use acetone to just give us the best surface prep we can get. All right, picked up a fresh coat of acetone. Let's get this finished prepped. You can see here, scrubbing this clean white paper towel, nothing. We are good to go. So the last step before I show you guys how to mix up the epoxy is I want to lay down a layer of painter's tape. I'm going to do it right along the edge. That way I don't have to worry about making a perfectly even line when I'm applying it on the edge. So I'm just using regular painter's tape for this. All right, so I just went through, made my tape line where I plan on stopping the bottom coating. I went across the top here. I ended up coming just up a little bit to catch those last couple rivets, come back down around. Don't ignore the second line, it's not important. And then down the side and in the back. And now that we have our surface prepped, tape lines taped, we can go ahead and mix up our epoxy and get this on the boat already. Right, so if you guys haven't applied epoxy before, especially a bottom coating since they tend to be a little bit thicker, I have one big suggestion and tip that you do that's going to make your life so much easier and that is mix it up in parts. Um, a lot of the instructions just say to pour the hardener into the can, mix it up and you're good to go. That's true, that will work, but you have now activated the entire canister of epoxy. A couple reasons why you don't want to do that. Number one, it starts to harden up way too soon. You're in the middle of painting, then everything gets tacky, and then you're just laying down a very uneven coat, and you're just ruining half your project. Reason number two, you very rarely use all of the epoxy if you're using a larger quantity. Why waste all this epoxy when you can just mix up exactly what you need, apply it, then mix up the next section? Three, 
it's really, really easy. All it is is a ratio. The ratio is right on the bottle. You go to Google, you search for ratio calculator, you type in the ratio, then you type in how much you wanna make and it tells you exactly how much to pour. It makes your whole job easier and you're using less material. You're gonna need something to mix it in. It needs to be a clean container. You need a scale, you need your epoxy, but then you also need something to stir it in. These work really well. All right, so you can go ahead and pull up a ratio calculator. Go ahead and just tap on that first link, it's the one I use. Now you'll see uh, A to B and C to D. A to B is your ratio, C is how much you're wanting to make, and D is how much you need to add. So let's take a look at what the canister says, and uh, we'll go from there. For small quantities, mix seven parts A to one part B. So A is your resin, B is the hardener. Go ahead and put that into our calculator. So seven parts resin to one part hardener. With uh, everything shaken and ready to go, I have the scale zeroed out with the cup on it. I'm gonna go ahead and pour, I'd say about three quarters of this up. Coated is a lovely dark gray color. All right, let's do our first pour. Okay, so that's saying one kilogram and 42 grams. So that's 1,042 grams, which means we need 149 grams of the activator. Forty-two. Oh, okay, a little bit extra, 152. 54. Those extra couple grams aren't going to hurt. Now it's go time. So now we need to mix this up and as soon as you mix you got to start painting. Okay. Probably should have mixed up a little bit less just so I would have had more room in the container. <laughs> now a couple ways you'll know it's starting to activate is the temperature. It will physically warm up and the viscosity. It will start thickening up. This looks pretty good to me. All right, well, that's a good first half of the boat coat. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the second half and get this done. Got about two buckets down. I'm working on the last bucket now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do what I've been doing is just pouring it out over the rivets and backfilling. Next thing I want to do now is pull off um, all the tape before the epoxy dries. That way it comes off nice and easy. And then uh, I'm going to go through and wipe up any of these drips before they dry with a little bit of acetone. That'll get them right up. And then we'll be good to let this cure overnight. Well, it's been about 16 hours or so. I'm out here checking on it for the first time. So far, everything looks really good. So my lights turned on definitely cured already the main thing I'm happy to see is all of the rivets are super saturated there is a good coating on the entire bottom of the boat there's no super bare spots so now if you know we have to beach it I have a little bit of protection up front for that mainly it's gonna be watertight so I'm really happy to see that all right guys, well if you found this video helpful, don't forget to let me know by hitting that like button. If you have any questions about the process, feel free to drop me a comment. And if you wanna see what's up next for the John Boat Build, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.